Hi and welcome to my introductory video on how to shoot the flat cat slingshot. I designed the slingshot to be a good hiking, camping, taking a trip, backpacking slingshot. Um, you only have a pouch, the bands, and the frame, and that's it. And you can make a new band set with only those components. Um, there are no ties or screws or plugs, no screwdriver needed, no band jig needed, no string, nothing else. If you just throw a bunch of bands, a few pouches, and your frame in a bag, you're good to go for however long you want to go. Um, so that was the idea behind this frame. Uh, the frame itself is flat, as per the name, and as such, it's not going to be as comfortable as some frames that are rounded and fit the hand well. So I did my best to design a frame that would be comfortable in the hand for shooting and secure um, within the constraint of being only a half inch thick. And I wanted it to be thin so that as you're walking around, it's not protruding or sticking out of a pocket. I've had and enjoyed those slingshots, but I found that I would always reach for the thinnest one when I went out to go on an adventure. So that's the idea of this frame. So let's talk about how to, sh how to uh, hold it, how to stand, how to shoot, how to aim, all the components of shooting, and we'll begin with how to hold it, the grip. Okay, so the Flat Cat Slingshot is an ob obligatory thumb support frame. This is not designed to be done with pinch grip like this. You have to take the pad of your thumb here, the knuckle here, and put it against the indentation here, right there. So it goes like this, and your thumb tip sticks beyond the tip a little bit. First finger wraps all the way over the top, and the tip of your finger should be in the middle of the frame there, while your knuckle is actually past the front of the frame here, like that. So it's in front. Your middle fingers come around, and they grasp the waist of the frame, and their job is to pull inward toward your palm. So the stability of this frame comes because these fingers are pulling in, rotating in, while your thumb pushes forward. So they're fighting each other. And in fighting each other is how you create the stability. The pinky keeps it all tucked up in place and there's a little bit of an extra security against if you should lose control of the frame. But mostly its job is to keep things pulled up into your palm. So again, the gist of this is to thumb here, tip a little past the, the tip, first finger wrapped all the way around, Middle fingers come in and pull it inward into your thumb, and your thumb resists that pull. So you get the thing really locked into place. And that's the idea of the grip. So it looks like this when you're drawn out. Okay, so that's the grip. Okay, now that we know how to hold this frame, let's talk about how to stand when you're getting ready to shoot. The basic idea is you want your body to be exactly in line with your target. It should be straight to the side. People like to bend in a little bit because when people start shooting, they want to kind of pull it straight toward them under their chin, into their face. And you see it like this. But what you want is to be perfectly flat so that your whole body is aligned. Now that goes for your elbow too. Another thing people like to do is they pull back and this elbow sticks out like this. You want that elbow to be exactly in the same line as the rest of the shooting so you can't see it at all when you're looking from the front, okay? The elbow should be pointing exactly the opposite direction from your target, like that, okay? Depending on how you do your anchor point, you're going to want to tip your head over. The key to accuracy in aiming is to get your eyeball exactly directly above your bands. And you can do that in a variety of ways, but one of them is to kind of tip your head just a little bit so that that eye, the right eye in this case, is looking right over the top of the bands, okay? When you go to draw the slingshot, it's not a bad idea to pull the bands back first so if they snap, they snap up toward your hand instead of straight into your eye. So the bands come up and then the frame, you kind of push the frame out and up to bring it on to target, okay? So that's just a quick, basic cover of how you stand and how you hold the frame and how you draw when you're getting ready to shoot. Okay, so the first step is to grab the pouch like this with your middle finger. And you've got it under a little bit of tension just so you can hold it in place. You have one, whatever your projectile is, ideally it's a sphere, even cubes don't shoot all that well, between your first finger and your, and your thumb. You're going to kind of roll those around and swap out. So now you've got it held here, it's still under tension with your pinky and your thumb. And then you're going to kind of use your thumb to push it into the middle of the pouch and then grab it with your first finger like that. And see how it's knocked right into the center of the pouch there. That's part of what that little hole is for, is to keep it nice and centered. So you have it securely locked here. Now you're going to come back in with your thumb and middle finger and you're going to grab the ball from the outside so your first finger can get free. And now your first finger is going to come over and take your middle finger's place and grab the ammo like that. I know that seems like a lot of steps, but it happens pretty smoothly once you get used to it. 
Now let's talk about how you're holding the ammo in the pouch. This is really important. Um, two key things. The number one key thing is that you're holding the ball itself and not the pouch in front of it. If you hold the pouch in front of it, then when you go to release, the ball is likely to bounce off your finger or thumb and go askew and you'll miss. The second thing is you want the pouch ends to be even. See how one isn't in front or behind here? You want them to be really nice and even because then ideally the, the draw strength in each band is equal and you don't have one pulling you up or pulling you down. So let me really emphasize this point if you're holding the ball, not the pouch. You want to get this. Okay, so see how my thumb is underneath and my knuckle is on top. Um, often when shooters start, they want to hold with their tip. Now you can, you can, you know, there's a million ways to skinny cat. You can do this however you want, but I like to bend this first finger back like that, reach over the top and grab it. So you've got this. Now notice what I've got here. I'm holding the ball, not the pouch. The pouch never touches itself and the pouch ends are even. They're not skewed over one way or the other. Okay, so that's gonna be the way that you're gonna hold the ammo in the pouch. The next most important thing is how to release the ammo. And we'll talk about this more a little later. But a lot of pe times people like to kind of actively, boom, they aim, they're ready, and when they go to shoot, they, boom, they let go. The problem is that is there's a real tendency to have a jump. You tend to knock the ammo one way or the other. And so what you need to do instead for maximum accuracy is let this right hand or whichever hand you're holding the pouch with just kind of relax. Like it suddenly went numb, like you sat on your hand too long and you can't feel it and it just bleh, like that. So you're holding it, you got it under tension, and when it comes time, you're ready to release the shot, you just kind of bleh, like that. Okay, so that's the basics of what to do at the pouch with your ammo. Okay, let's talk about anchor point. This is a pretty complex topic. I'm gonna to break it into three steps or stages, if you will. Step one, you would use an anchor point that's where you're touching part of your hand to your face and you're doing it in front of your face, okay? The advantages of this are that um, it's easy. Put that num knuckle of your thumb right there, the only knuckle on your thumb, I guess, at the corner of your mouth, boom. You're looking right down the bands. It's safe. If you let go, it's going to snap forward, not hit you in the face. Okay. The disadvantage is you don't get much draw length. And draw length is magic when it comes to slingshots. In order to get the same speed from bands only pulling this far, you need to have pretty heavy bands. And heavy bands fatigue you and make accuracy really difficult. If there are bands in tube sets where you can pull them all the way across your body, this is called full butterfly and you get the most speed for the least pull weight. And that's the magic of latex, is if you had, they're pretty long bands, but if you pull them all the way to here, you can get incredible speeds for just negligible pull weight. So it's, it's, it's great. The downside is, by the time the ball crosses your face, it's going pretty fast. And you're not a true slingshot guy or girl until you've got that crimson mark across your cheek from a shot gone wrong from pouch release, which we've talked about. Um, so, Step one is going to be putting all that in front of your face and just accepting you won't get the most speed. Now when you're first shooting, you don't care about speed anyway, you care about accuracy. So slow speed is really best. So you're going to pick a fixed distance and only shoot at that distance until you've got all the technique together. So there's nothing wrong with this when you're getting started. If you want to take the next step, you can, so notice how my thumb is on the top of the, the pouch here. You can take your thumb on the bottom of the pouch and reach back a little further take this knuckle of your first finger and touch it someplace on your ear, like that, okay? And the reason you turn your hand out is because if your hand's in, your fingers are kind of in your face, and so it's just easier to turn the hand out so it's a flat surface to work with when you contact your ear. So now, we're gonna to touch that knuckle somewhere in your ear, and where you touch depends on a lot of factors, and it's gonna be different for everybody, so you've gotta figure out, depending on how high, high or low you're hitting, where you want that anchor point to be, okay? You can adjust the anchor point and you can adjust your aim point. But ideally you pick a, 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 a standard constant aim point on your slingshot and adjust this within a target shooting setting. So that's not a universal tip, just what you're gonna do for this case. So if we're doing this kind of slightly longer draw, hand out, thumb on the bottom, bring this knuckle back, touch it someplace on your ear, and that becomes your anchor point. Okay, and again, you want to get your eyeball exactly over the bands so they are a perfect vertical line. The top bands cover the bottom band so you can't see them at all. And that's going to be the sort of second stage anchor point. Now the third kind of anchor point is called floating anchor, which is really a misnomer. 
And the reason they call it that is because now you're going to pull your bands back where they're past your face. There's nothing to touch anymore. So it's a floating anchor point, but it really isn't. Because what we're going to do instead here is touch our cheek to the band. Okay. So that becomes a pretty cool anchor point because now you're touching the band, which controls where the projectile actually goes. So instead of anchoring off something random like your face, one of the problems with this is that you're anchoring the pouch through joints in your hand to something soft on your face. So it's not really as anchored as you might think. And depending on how, how hard you're pulling your finger, how clenched your hand is, that can really vary from day to day. So I like a floating anchor point, which is really a band cheek anchor point. And the way you do that is you pull back, again, keep everything perfectly straight, pull back, and you just very lightly touch your cheek to the band. And you do it in such a way that your eyeball, again, is exactly looking over the top of the band, so the bottom bands are covered by the top bands, and the bands look like an exact straight up and down line or skinny triangle. Okay. It's a great technique. It gets you more draw length. You can get a new band set, but for the same draw length you had before or less, you can get more speed, which is really cool. Speed's great because it hits the target harder. When you hit that seed pod in the woods, it explodes instead of just whatever. But it also flattens out your trajectory. Within the distances you're working with, instead of having a lob and never knowing quite how high or low to aim, you flatten that out a lot, so it's much easier to hit things at farther distances. So, speed is cool. And the way you get speed is either with a really heavy pull here, but you're going to sacrifice accuracy, or with a longer pull uh, with the same weight that gets you more time for the ball to accelerate as the pouch brings it forward. That's what it boils down to. But when you pull back here, now the ball's passing your face as it goes, and the likelihood of hitting yourself on the cheek goes up. Okay? Now, in any of these situations, pouch release is critical, critical, critical. Because if you release with a bump, or if one finger sticks, or if it jumps over a finger, if your active release isn't good, then the ball is going to go higher or lower every which way. And two things can happen. It can either just go off forever, and you can miss and damage things and get ricochets you didn't mean to, or you can hit the fork of your slingshot. That's called a fork hit. And you can both damage your slingshot, um, which is a pity. And trust me, once you get into any kind of speed, you can really damage your slingshot with a fork hit. I've seen some terrible damage. Um, the other thing is that you can hit yourself in the face, especially as you start doing these longer draw things. If your pouch release is bad, you can clock yourself pretty good. And like I've said, that crimson, crimson streak on the cheek is kind of a telltale sign that people have been doing long draw, long draw techniques. So those are the kind of the three steps. And of course, you can go from this kind of to semi butterfly to full butterfly as you like. But the farther you get out, the more likelihood there is of hitting yourself. So that's the trade-off, but the speed is amazing. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's Anchor Point. What I'm going to show you here is a rough approximation of what you're going to see when you're looking down the bands. We're going to use the center of this lamp as our target point. Nice little crosshairs. So what do we see here? We see the black bands in a perfectly vertical line. Now forgive me if the camera's not getting I'm going to try to get this perfectly vertical. The line should look exactly straight up and down. It should not look off to the right side or the left side like this. And you really want to be mindful of this. You know that if it's a perfectly straight up and down band, your eye is exactly above the bands. And that's critical for good accuracy. So once you get that straightened out, now you see this kind of tall, skinny triangle. The bands get wider and blurrier as they get toward your eye, and sharper and thinner as they get up toward the top. Now if you notice, the top of the band itself is a little bit below the top of the fork. And so when you start, you can use the top of the band as your aim point, right there, right on the crosshairs of the lamp, keeping this perfectly straight up and down. Now you may find that given your bands, given temperature, given draw weight, given all sorts of things, that your elevation needs to shift for your given distance and target. So maybe you need to come up a little bit. Maybe if that thing is really far away, you need to aim as high as this, which would lob the shot and shoot it clear across a lake or something like that. So that's the gist of what you're looking at when you're trying to get your sight picture. Okay, one note about this specific design. See how the bands come out the fronts of the forks through that slot? You want to make sure that you've got them pulled over the tops of the forks, like this, not pulling back straight through the slots. And there are two reasons for this. 
One is it's more secure. When the bands make one more turn, it adds some friction, which you know increases the security within the, the forks. And the other is that if you're trying to aim like this, you're going to be looking across the top of the bands right, how can I do this, through the fork. Whereas if you have them pulled like this, then your sight picture goes over the top of the fork and you're not you know, looking, trying to look through something solid to see your target. Um, and in the next video, we're going to talk about how the flathead belt clip helps you keep this orientation as you're walking around. Okay, so that's a very quick review of these topics of how to shoot this slingshot. Each one of these topics could go into it infinitely, I promise you. Go onto the forums and start reading and asking questions, and there is an incredible bounty of information about all of this stuff. Um, I do want to make a word about safety. Uh, it's, as you shoot more and more, you get surprised how much you can ricochet stuff. You, you shoot at what you think is sure to be a safe target, some tree off in the woods there, and to your surprise, the ball comes back and clocks you right in the forehead or your friend or a window or something like that. Being mindful when you're shooting is really important. The, the power of ricochet is surprising. Not to mention if you get a fork hit. You know, I, I've probably shot a million shots out of a slingshot and once in a while, I'll just something, my fingers will get sticky or something weird happens and it hits the fork and goes wherever it wants to. And that can be dangerous too and it can come back and knock you in the eye. So safety glasses are really important. If you're willing to have your own glasses, if you wear them, get damaged, that's up to you. Um, but protect your eyes, it matters. And then just general mindfulness. Uh, if you're shooting something high and it goes over a hill and hits a car, that's on you. There's a lot, slingshotting is best done by responsible adults. I know it's portrayed as, as a children's sport in general, but you can really do some damage, especially as you get into these especially bands where your speeds get up into 250, 300 feet per second with a ball like this, that's a lot of power. So be careful, but most of all, have fun. And thanks very much for watching.